I firmly believe that we can never have enough debugging tools in our toolbox because we never know when we're gonna use them. So in this week's Two Minute Tool and Tip Tuesday, we're gonna take a look at conditional breakpoints. So to demonstrate what a conditional breakpoint is, we'll take a look at this project. We have a simple floating action button, and when we click that button, we're going to show a toast. The toast message will be determined by whatever is populated in the edit text. Now imagine we want to debug the toast. So we'll add a breakpoint on the line where we create that toast. We'll then attach the debugger to our app. And if we hit the fab, we'll now see that our breakpoint is hit. If we click resume program, we'll see that if we hit the fab again, we will also continue to hit our breakpoint. So now from here, we can evaluate expressions and generally check the behavior of our toast and make sure it's getting the correct string from the edit text. Now this might be a little bit annoying, however, if we're always hitting this breakpoint, even if there's no text entered. So what could we do to ensure that we only hit our breakpoint if there's actually some text to show? Well, this is where conditional breakpoints come in handy. If we right click on our breakpoint, we'll see that there's an input box available to enter in a condition. If there's a condition present here, then our breakpoint will only be hit if that condition is true. So here we'll add a condition that says only hit the breakpoint if edit text dot text dot to string dot is not blank evaluates to true. This will allow us to only suspend the thread if there's actually text going to be displayed in our toast. Once the condition is entered, we can hit done. Now, when we hit our fab, we'll see that nothing happens. Our breakpoint is not hit. That's because there's nothing entered in the edit text. However, if we enter some text and hit the fab once again, we see now our breakpoint is hit and we can go back to debugging our app. Now this can be really useful because it allows us to only stop operation under certain conditions. And then once stopped, we could use the evaluate expression tool to evaluate multiple expressions and more quickly find what is wrong with our program. Thank you so much for watching everybody. If you want more two minute tool and tip Tuesday, you can check out the full playlist on my channel. And if you want to stay up to date each time I upload a video, hit the subscribe button. Until next time devs.